Something. Some something. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jake wouldn't do a uh, a talk with no shoes this year. Uh, I don't know why, but so I'm going to do it for you, Jake. Ah, nail. Um, so yeah, hey, thanks for uh, wrapping up your Saturday. A beautiful day out. Uh, what's it? Four o'clock. Um, the the fact that you stuck around, uh, I appreciate. Uh, um, hopefully you won't be too disappointed. Yeah, you're gonna be disappointed. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll 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 go on with it. So, Internet of Terrible, uh, can you hear me meow? So, a little bit about me. Uh, yes, Brandon McCrillis, Rendition InfoSec. Um, we're hiring. If have we said that we're hiring yet? No, we're hiring. No? Yeah. yeah, we're hiring. We're hiring. <laughs> I need a break. Uh, so, contact information. All right, so we're going to discuss case studies of conducting network enumeration using voice over IP infrastructure and other embedded devices. Uh, I'm also going to highlight attack methodologies used for credential harvesting, enumeration, denial of service, and persistence. Uh, practical defensive techniques for the defenders uh, and real world attacker mitigations um, via who knew monitoring and secure configuration, which uh, you know still tends to be a thing. I don't know how they got in there. Yeah, just ignore that. So, times have changed. <laughs> you know, check out this um, Texas Instruments uh, advertisement from 1982. Uh, you know, look at the specs uh, on the computer, uh, you know, itself. Um, More than one thing has changed about that ad. Yeah. If anyone knows anything else that's changed, uh, you know, maybe it's, it's worth a drone. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, times have changed. We're, we're increasingly more connected. Uh, we're more, uh, uh, we're more out there on the interwebs. Uh, and you know, that, that's a problem. Uh, it, it pays, uh, Jake's daughter's college bill, uh, tuition bill. But you know, hey, uh, you know, times have been changing. Um, so, even though they canceled this, I was like, man, I really need to reuse this slide from my uh, USMA talk uh, back in March, uh, CyberTalks Atlanta. Um, yeah, the Internet of Terrible, the Internet's going to kill you. Um, spacebar, beep, boop, bop, click, dot com, you can read. Um, man, it's, it's a scary, scary world out there. Next slide. Um, so, damn, Internet, you scary, man. You scary. There's there's a lot of stuff out there. I'm just like, wow. Why, why are you even doing this? Uh, it's just, it's, it's what? <laughs> Slow on the uptake. Slow on the uptake. Rap, rap, rap. <laughs> Spy on you, Barbie. There is nothing creepy about this picture, uh, though others have told me that there is. Uh, this is, you know, I was dismantling Barbie. I took a picture of it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where her head is now. It might be on. Place in the office, and that's all I'm saying. Is it still on your desk? It is still on the desk. That's, that's even, that's equally creepy. <laughs> equally. You know, spy on you, Barbie. So, uh, just real quick, uh, rendition, uh, jumped on, uh, on, on Hello Barbie, uh, purchased one of these things, um, took it apart. Uh, and, you know, at its core, um, Mike Banks, you helped with this, huh? Remember that? Barbie's kind of dumb. I mean, a lot of her processing and intelligence was all cloud. Um, so Barbie herself, uh, I guess if we're you know um, humanizing a toy, is uh, you know kind of kind of kind of dumb. Um, you know, we could still do th some things like uh, you know let's let's hot mic it. It can be uh, you know throw it in back of dad's car. Um, you know, hot mic'd and uh, you know kind of see what happens over the weekend. But uh, you know, hey, uh, embedded devices. Uh, doing things with stuff. So we have more of these embedded devices, uh, as uh, Jake was talking about earlier in his talk, which is fantastic. Uh, a lot of embedded devices out there, uh, a lot of things that are running web servers and, and web services that are easily exploitable, um, not secure by any stretch of the imagination, uh, and it's, it's getting worse. Um, this was a, a picture, uh, I apologize if you can't see it so great, this was a, a Delta airline, uh, and it's a little in-flight entertainment system booting up uh, a Linux kernel. Why, why not? Um, you probably can't see some of these dates in here, you know, 2002, 2003, 
2001, uh, you know, some, uh, how are they patching these things? I mean, we still see Delta with, uh, you know, Windows 2000 computers, um, you know, keeping the plane in the air. So, uh, hypothetically. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, this is my point. Uh, more, more embedded devices out there. <sighs> Many services, much lulls. I said that backwards, but you get my point. Uh, living off the land, I mean, what are their thing, uh, what are, what can we do? Um, what, what do we see in real world penetration testing, uh, and vulnerability assessments? Um, first one, so th these are all real world, uh, engagements where rend rendition is done. Uh, this is an air magnet WIPS, uh, wireless intrusion uh, prevention system. Um, default credentials. Um, I was showing to the client that, uh, oops, I logged because I tried admin first uh, instead of uh, air magnet sensor as the user. Oops. Um, but, you know, in a, in a regulated environment, you know, everyone's uh, constantly thinking, secure the endpoint, secure my Windows box, secure my server, secure this. But, Something that's supposed to be filling a, a security uh, a security role for you. Um, well, let's just keep that default. Um, not, not so much. Uh, this is a <laughs> a web GUI uh, level 15 exec on a uh, on a router uh, in the same network. Um, you know, hey, a uh, little command box. Let me you know do some do some clicking. Um, definitely things that you don't want accessible to your internal users. The quintessential webcam. So, you know, we see these all the time, uh, default creds. Um, and it's, it's cool to show to a client. Uh, you know, you add a password in there, uh, kind of can zoom in and see what's possibly on that gentleman's screen. Um, I actually, uh, you know, because I don't have much of a life, uh, th just kind of sat there and watched video for a while. Um, one of the things I showed to the client was uh, I, I turned I turned off uh, a lot of their video logging, which is definitely bad if you know you're you're hoping to have that uh, in your call center or whatever. This uh, you know I, I hoped it was the IT department. Um, this uh, <laughs> so I'm watching videos and I see these two ladies like just setting up this this you know banner and taping it, uh, and then as I'm going through video, all of a sudden a little bit a little bit's gone, right? So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll isolate that exact moment in time where that fell, um, and you know maybe they'll catch the the culprit that ripped this thing down. I don't know. Again, I was bored. Um, so around two two a.m., uh, the wind blew and uh, and and you know it came down a little bit here. Um, I thought that was great. Um, and, you know, yeah, like I said, I know, I need help. Um, uh, so this one, all right, so we have a, we have an FTP server running on a APC UPS device. Okay, uh, let's say rather large APC UPS device uh, in your rack, in your data center, um, and uh, instead of one, we'll say, I don't know, a dozen. Um, all uh, default uh, credentialed, um, FTP server running, I grabbed a config in this uh, particular shot. So, I mean, hey, who cares? Okay, so you can grab my config for my ups. Okay, well, what can I do with your config? Um, let's see, I can uh, re-upload a new config to you. Uh, I can enable SSH. Uh, you, I can change your DNS server. I can enable uh, uh, Telnet. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Uh, and, uh, you know, because I have your default credentials, I'll, I'll throw that thing back up on there. Uh, maybe take it out of bypass mode. Uh, remove all your thresholds. Um, maybe it's, it's not really serving at an ups at that point, And you're not going to find out until it's too late. Uh, full disclosure, this was a, uh, a, a credit card environment, uh, credit card processor, we'll say, uh, hypothetically. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what is one minute of downtime to a international credit card processor? Probably, probably a lot of freaking money, right? Um, this screenshot here, they had their, uh, their read and write SNMP, uh, community names, um, sitting in there, uh, blacked them out to protect the innocent. Um, but, you know, things like that, uh, that's another breadcrumb where I can now start targeting more of your core infrastructure. Yes, sir, you in the back. How many uh, devices will those SNMP credentials share with on the network? How many devices were the SNMP credentials share? Well, we own their SolarWinds box, so I guess we could go figure that out and see. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, pretty much all. Um, and, and typing your company name and then putting priv, and typing your company name and putting pub, um, isn't really obscuring or, or making this uh, community string um, any any harder to guess. 
Uh, just saying. Uh, so the bread and butter of this one. So I can go in as administrator, uh, and I can uh, yeah, reboot the ups. I'll put it to sleep, put it to bypass. I'll just turn the whole damn thing off. Um, and, and the client's like, well, how does this affect me? And uh, we said, well, we'll go and shut them all off. And they're like, no! Uh, so, yeah, hopefully you get my point. Uh, getting on to the voice over IP infrastructure stuff, uh, a Shortel IP800 phone. Laughing at my... Um, <laughs> the, the host name's called Mistake. Uh, it had default creds. That was a mistake. Um, yeah, so what can I do from here? All right, well, I'll, I'll check out the numbers you've been calling. It uh, uh, just so happens this is in an executive conference room. We find out after the fact. Uh, this is one of three devices that we located all default creds for Shortel. Um, so at 3 in the morning, I'm like, meh, I'll just call somebody. Uh, so I don't know whose phone rang, but, uh, you know, demonstrating, you know, you know could I, could I, hook up a little headset? Could I reroute that traffic? Could I do some uh, redirection stuff? Uh, you know, can I call the CEO at home and say there's an emergency? Can I uh, call the IT department and say, you know, hey, don't come in until 10 tomorrow? Uh, I, who knows? Uh, can I call your mom and say, you're going to be late for dinner? I'll probably do that. One of the coolest things built into this, because why not? You know, you have your little web GUI uh, for this for this device that's really just uh, enabling you to conference with other entities. Um, there's a little utility in there. It had a ping, trace route, some other kind of things. Um, I'm not even going to speculate uh, what privilege level on the actual uh, device uh, ping was running as. Uh, you know, I'll let Jake fill in the blanks, or or please review his talks, and you can kind of figure it out. But uh, I started mapping the network. Uh, in a rudimentary fashion from an IP phone using default creds. Okay, so they had a security operations center um, as a SOC analyst, and if you start seeing traffic from this IP phone, are you going to instantly say, oh, it's an attacker? I'd be like, that short tail device is a piece of junk. It's uh, pinging all the devices in the network. Um, I don't need to be on your endpoint. I don't need to mess with uh, Emmet. I don't need to mess with your antivirus, uh, IP tables. I don't need to mess with any of your other kind of catch the bad guy techniques uh, or, or countermeasures. Um, I can just hang out here and, and kind of get a good uh, initial baseline of what your network looks like. So Avaya. This is a, uh, a big uh, call, call manager. Uh, this does everything from voice over IP, a little bit of switching stuff. It does some conferencing. Uh, another default credentials sitting on the trusted LAN uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a PCI environment. So I found out, well, this thing's got SSH going. Uh, so it only took me two, two sets of creds, uh, and, and then that's because I Googled uh, AP, uh, sorry, Avaya uh, Aura uh, default creds. They had two. The second one got me in. Uh, you know, hey, welcome to your new account. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. So, so now we're sitting here uh, at, uh, as, as the user Cust, which is a Avaya hard-coded user uh, that is, you know, for, for support of, of the device itself. Uh, the, does the client know that? Hopefully. Uh, hopefully that's in your, um, kind of in your, in your lay of the land, uh, knowing your network. But, uh, yeah, uh, cust, and then cust01 is a password. Uh, I'm on SSH. So, I didn't really show you in that screenshot, but, uh, if you, again, if you saw Jake's talk earlier, that, that thing was running, uh, Linux 2.6. So, uh, yeah, so I get on there as a user. Um, how, how quickly can I get to root? What can I do at that point? Um, I pretty much own all of your VoIP infrastructure at that point. Um, I can mess with your phones. I can mess with your traffic. I can do all kinds of sort of uh, nefarious things. Um, and this thing's also storing backups. I was actually kind of freaked out. I thought that was a social security number when I just put that slide up, and I was like, oh, crap. Uh, but it's not, I swear. No one write that down. But uh, up here you see <laughs> IP phone backup. So, you know, I grab my IP phone backup. I, I unzip that. Uh, I'm getting all kinds of uh, enumeration of users. Some of them had titles in there. Uh, you know, uh, th this one's pretty, pretty benign. But there were, you know, CEO's office, <laughs> things like that. Hey, now I have uh, another breadcrumb uh, on my trail to owning all of your infrastructure. So. Um, being 2.6, uh, Linux uh, compiled a, a log rotate uh, exploit, or sorry, uh, uh, VI threw it into a exploit.c. Uh, I needed a compiler uh, because there wasn't one on the device. 
the device was configured so it could not talk out to the internet, but cool, I just threw a compiler on my redirector, uh, Kali box, and just uh, did a wget locally to that, and there you go, I now have a compiler. Um, you fill in the rest of the blanks, um, you know, it, it's owned. So, voice over IP. So I did a talk for uh, the US Military Academy, um, and I discussed how one of our largest incident responses uh, that, that I was a part of when I joined Rendition, um, the, the head of the incident response said, uh, hey, if, uh, if you were in the network and you were tipped off that we're going to start this incident response and, and try to remediate things, uh, what would you do? And I was like, I'd be in your VoIP phones. I'd be in your infrastructure. I would be embedded so deep in places that you're not even going to look for me. Um, so after that talk, I was like, well, I should probably do another talk of what I meant by that. And, and here it is. What is VoIP? Definitely not that. Um, that's one of the first hits. I'm like, what is VoIP? Uh, yeah, I, I, there's too much to say about that. that that's not what VoIP is. Um, so asterisk. Asterisk is a, uh, let's say, we'll, we'll say it's, We'll say it's a PBX, right? It's a, a public branch exchange. Uh, it, it handles your um, it handles your your public switch telephone network traffic, your VoIP net traffic. Basically, your phones are talking through this thing. Where it's at, two turntables and a polycom phone. Um, if anyone's a Beck fan, hopefully you got that. What's in the box? Um, Sorry. Uh, so in the box, um, after this talk, uh, I flew up to Columbus. Uh, another guy that works uh, for Indition, Jeff, he owns a PC recycling company, uh, does a little eBay. Uh, and uh, he's like, hey, I have a whole, uh, a whole pallet of these Polycom phones. Do you want one? I was like, sure. I'll, I'll definitely take one. Um, this is kind of how it came. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> so. Factory reset these damn things, right? Um, <laughs> you know, the boot server address is in there. Uh, I found some other interesting information that was kind of just sitting in uh, on the phone. Uh, there's actually a factory reset me button, um, or in the menu. It, it's not that hard, uh, especially if you're changing out devices. Now, this this Polycom uh, Soundpoint 501 phone is probably two, era 2006, 2007. At 200 plus dollars a piece, are they probably still doing their job in large environments or any corporate environment? Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, if they're working and they're doing their thing, uh, I'm sure they're still around. Just trace the IP, came out somewhere around Washington, DC. We'll leave it at that. Uh, so, pulling up the Polycom menu, uh, sorry, Polycom uh, uh, provisioning documents. Um, it was like, hey, if you want to make your local machine the uh, provisioning server for all these phones, just do it. And I was like, oh, awesome. Uh, also found out that anything that you, uh, that you change or modify on the phone itself, where you can set your, uh, your, your boot server, your provisioning server, uh, syslog server, anything like that, uh, hard-coded on the phone or, or entered on the phone overrides anything that's provisioned over the network. So, okay, so you have physical access there, but I really don't need to do that. Um, if you see in this other slide, you know, it's looking for phone one config and SIP config, uh, TFTP. So I can change that to FTP. I'll do a little FTP server on my local box. I'll throw a uh, default or modified phone one config and a SIP config in there. Uh, the phone um, it just kind of reaches out with default uh, FTP credentials and says, hey, do you have these files? If you do, it sucks them up, it consumes them, it reboots, and it runs like that. Um, there's no, hey, I don't think you're really my provisioning server. Uh, the phone just does what you tell it to do because it's dumb like Barbie. <sighs> default creds. Actually, Mike's talk earlier, that uh, PLCM SPIP. Uh, I saw I saw in your in your top creds like number eleven, right? Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, default user pass one two three, default admin pass four five six. Uh, considering that these phones were not factory reset, uh, can you guess what the <laughs> what the recycled phones credentials were? Oh yeah, the default creds. Um, uh, not not a good thing. Not a good thing. Uh, the phone itself a little web GUI. Um, and it asks for authentication. So I'm like, cool, I'll bite. Um, authenticate over HTTP. 
Uh, I mean, we're dealing with default creds, so I was like, okay, not a huge deal, right? But uh, let's say you're like, oh man, I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna go in and, and secure my secure my uh, VoIP phones after this talk. Know that uh, it's still sending creds in the clear. So in the packet, we see a little base64 encoded string. We throw that in some PowerShell and comes out polycom four five six. Uh, easy. Um, one of the free, first things I do when I get in a net, any net, is I just run a, run a Wireshark for a while, uh, or PCAP capture, uh, and kind of baseline the net. You can capture those creds plain text uh, all day. Uh, depends what you're going at. Um, so to kind of continue my research, I had to get a PBX, or at least I felt like I wanted to mess with PBX. Uh, Asterix now is Digium's um, free Linux distro uh, of free PBX. Um, it sucks to configure. <laughs> uh, anyone that does that for a living uh, configures these phones. Man, I, I really uh, I applaud you because uh, the, the thing just sucks, especially in a VM. Um, it did not want to play well uh, installing into VMware whatsoever, uh, but we got it done. One of the cool things, and this kind of goes to the defensive side, um, you know, you try to put in a password on there for root, and it's like, ah, that's a dictionary word. I mean, it's doing some rudimentary analysis on what you're typing in there, uh, and, you know, like a good user, I'm like, yeah, use anyway, cool, I don't care where, I don't, you know. <laughs> it's an IP phone, I mean, who would, who would target my IP phone and why? The asterisk now GUI also comes up saying that we have a default admin password, default uh, asterisk manager password. You know, um, hopefully uh, people that are configuring these things, uh, you know, don't think that this was built into the web GUI to kind of alert you to these things uh, for, for no reason at all. Um, you know, obviously it's screaming at you to change things. So calling your mom. I think your mom's nice. I like talking to her on the phone. Um, common attack vectors, historically, uh, for uh, voice over IP infrastructure is, uh, you know, enumeration and ga uh, information gathering, enumeration, monitoring, eavesdropping, uh, VLAN hopping, attacking authentication, which we kind of already did a little bit, um, denial of service, uh, flooding, and spoofing caller IDs. All awesome things to do, and we're going to do some. Oh. <laughs> We're going to do some sexy things with these phones. So when an attacker owns your VoIP, one of the coolest things that, for me, uh, and this isn't just um, Polycom specific, uh, Cisco also does this, some SNOM phones, um, you know, kind of pick your, pick your VoIP IP phone vendor uh, and, and, and check this out. Um, there's a SIP notify packet uh, that has a check sync in there. Um, and basically what this does is it goes to the phone, the phone responds with a 200 OK, uh, and the phone reboots and then grabs a new config. It doesn't say, who are you sending me this packet? It just says, sure, I'll reboot. Um, so, you know, if I have, one, taken over your provisioning server at this point, uh, or two, masqueraded as your provisioning server um, and kind of pointed you to my direction to grab your config, I can, you know, widespread just reboot all these phones, have them suck up my new config, and, uh, and I win. It actually uh, actually says in here remotely rebooting the phone. You know, in the in the Polycom uh, uh, manual, like this is an everyday thing. Yeah, extraordinary uh, ad admin task. I'm sure this saves many many man hours. But an attacker can use this to uh, his or her advantage, um, and uh, you know, own your VoIP. There you go. So forced consumption of a tampered configuration to the phone, completely unauthenticated. So let's think of a check sync DDoS, or DOS, sorry. Um, I'm in your network, uh, you know, let's say my purposes uh, aren't for exfil of data or signet collection, so I've heard, saying this just there to wreak havoc, uh, maybe I start um, DOSing all of your IT department phones, right? I have these things just constantly just in a loop rebooting over and over and over again. Um, and at the same time, I'm powering off all the ups in your data center. Uh, I'm crushing some of your servers. Uh, what's your incident response really going to look like? You know, you're relying on this kind of stuff. Uh, maybe you can like tie a note to a rat and kind of like kick it down the hall and, and hof hopefully, you know, you get some help. Um, 
interesting, interesting things here. So, uh, what's it? Tied to the cat. Yep. Tied to the cat. Hurting the cats, you know, with all the notes on them is hard, but. Uh, so there's a, an awesome uh, Python-based SIP packet forging tool. So I'm sitting there with, with Scapey, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to capture one of these check sync packets, uh, and then I'm going to replay it maliciously and wrap that into a loop. Uh, good thing uh, this guy, a nice Italian gentleman, uh, Mr. Vertera, uh, made this uh, SIP ping uh, Python tool, uh, which basically lets you craft SIP packets, whether it be a specific message that you want sent to the phone uh, or to push a new config to have it reboot. Um, I used it for the, the, the check sync packets and it worked like a charm. Uh, you know, a couple switches, uh, tech S for source, tech D for destination, tech P for port, uh, type in 5060 for SIP, hit the make go now button and your phone reboots. Another cool one I found, special extensions. So if your CEO's phone is uh, extension 3000, right? I can add an extension called, you know, let's, we'll name it 3001. It's hard for me to think of, 3001. Um, now, what I can also do is I can set how the phone answers that, right? Uh, so when I dial 3001, it goes to the CEO's, uh, CEO's phone. I can set that thing to auto answer with no user notification at all uh, and turn on the mic. Uh, you know, that's a great way to kind of monitor, uh, you know, think of the an attacker hot micing a bunch of uh, phones in your security operations center to kind of see, uh, you know, what 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 they're scrambling after, uh, how you're trying to get me, uh, what you're trying to find next. Uh, maybe I just want to hot mic some of your C-level execs if I'm trying to steal proprietary information. Maybe I'm a competing business. Who knows? Uh, the fact that this does, uh, that this happens, um, <laughs> That you can just have this phone not even not even ring once and just go boop into hot mic, it just blew me away. Um, yeah, so you know, guilty knowledge now. Uh, you know, please use it for good only. <laughs> you can also do the same thing with a group of extensions, right? So I can say, all right, extension nine thousand, it's going to ring these forty phones. Uh, I can do the same thing, have it auto answer. I can have it hot mic. I can have it do all kinds of stuff. I can lock out the user. Um, just by setting how I want this phone to respond when called on this other extension. Now, to the user, I'm not messing with their normal extension. I'm adding something that is, uh, you know, uh, not, a, not, uh, not known to them. Uh, they don't know this is happening. Their phone still responds and does all its, everything it's supposed to do, uh, except for uh, when I want it to do something special, it will do it. If you're curious, the VoIP prot SIP alert info one class, you set it to a value of three, uh, and uh, yeah, it uh, auto answers without any ringing. Uh, very easy. Like I said, this is your SIP config. If you remember before, your Polycom phone by default was looking for phone1.config and SIP config. So uh, I make this little modification in my SIP config. I host it locally on my FTP or TFTP server. Uh, I send a check sync packet to your phone. It reboots. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm good to go. The most scary, in my opinion, VLAN hopping, right? VLANs, what? V VLANs, that's, that's excellent network segmentation. Until you plug uh, it into the other port, uh, and then you're writing a trusted, um, a trusted VLAN for your voice, voice over IP phones, which likely bypass firewalls and proxies. Uh, maybe you have some content filter at your place of employment that doesn't like you to go to uh, XYZ website. Um, you know, as most uh, administrators and most uh, configurations we see, you know, the, the voice over IP VLAN is explicitly trusted. Rock on. How does this work? So you have two ports on the back of your phone, right? Uh, we'll say VLAN 20 uh, is, for the, is for the voice over IP traffic directly to the phone, uh, and then VLAN 10 is computer traffic, right? Um, if you didn't know, uh, if you have one of these kind of uh, IP phones, let's say you have a Cisco IP phone sitting next to your desk, or one on each side of your monitor, I don't know, I'm speaking hypothetically here, uh, it's your gateway. <laughs> your traffic from your computer goes to the phone first, and there's a little, like I said, it's like Barbie, phone's not very smart, uh, no offense to Barbie, I'm sure she's really smart in real life, I never met her, but, uh, you know, <laughs> It's not too hard to trick this thing and say, well, I'm going to plug into uh, my 
my network port instead of the PC port on the phone. Uh, and then most of these phones, you know, Cisco supports CDP. Um, spoiler alert, the VLAN ID is actually hard-coded into the phone. Uh, so if you go through the menu and you type your four, five, six uh, crazy admin password to get into the thing, you can actually see your VLAN tag. Maybe I add that to my traffic, uh, add that over here. Uh, maybe I just start sniffing for CDB traffic and, and I see my, uh, you know, uh, voice, um, voice VLAN ID. There you go, rock on. I am now sitting on your, uh, on your, on your VoIP VLAN uh, instead of being uh, directed through your monitoring devices, firewalls, what have you. Don't try that at home. Don't try that at home. So there's some ways around this. Um, you can you can Google, uh, you know, pretty much how to. Uh, you, you can sinkhole your IP, right? So if you're uh, if you're on your voice over IP VLAN, let's say uh, extension 3000, that phone is disconnected. You can then say anything that connects uh, on that interface will just black hole that until we figure it out. Um, that kind of gets around people doing the whole plug and play, grabbing a new IP address on this uh, voice over IP VLAN and rocking on. Um, that, that's one way to, to mitigate this stuff. Um, also. Uh, Mr. Bertera, who does the SIP ping, also has a great blog post about how to uh, how to block and filter uh, SIP traffic using IP tables. So two different ways there. <sighs> so Kali Metis Metasploit, old versions of Kali, and we'll even say, let's say Backtrack, uh, we'll say Backtrack 4.5. Um, you had a lot of uh, a lot more robust uh, voice over IP tools. Um, current Kali distros, let's say two, um, you're going to see a lot of this uh, under Metasploit in uh, auxiliary VoIP and auxiliary scanner SIP. Um, it's mostly enumeration scripts uh, and then a little bit of uh, funky um, voice over IP uh, exploit tools in there for, uh, you know, uh, client base, like a, a Windows voice over IP application, things like that. Um, the old versions of, uh, of Kali, or if you're going to go uh, back, back port to back, backtrack, uh, you'll see uh, the SIP vicious, SIP dump, SIP crack uh, tool suites. And that does everything from man in the middle of your authentication between, uh, between your, your phones, uh, can dump creds, you can uh, mess with configs, uh, do, all kinds of, uh, do all kinds of cool stuff there. Future development. Uh, SIP tunneling. I mean, that's that's not too hard. Um, uh, exploit and ex exfiltration, uh, exfiltration framework, I think, would be awesome to see. Um, you know, if you can ride through a whole network uh, through your scanning, enumeration, your recon, your exploitation, your persistence phases uh, using nothing but this sort of infrastructure and then hopping between these embedded devices and the call manager and all that, do you really need to be on a Windows box? No. I mean, it, you know, if I if I have your uh, Avaya uh, call management system, um, can I just map a share to your file server and start sucking things out that way? Yeah. Is your SOC analyst going to say, "Wow, this this call manager is uh, is doing some weird SMB traffic now"? Maybe. Maybe they'd be like, "Huh, that's weird." Right? More cat videos. <laughs> Uh, enumeration of trusted devices within the information system. I, I think uh, I think that's great. I'd like to see some more robust tools um, from the uh, voice over IP side uh, to be able to just enumerate your Windows boxes, uh, you know, and end map for VoIP devices, uh, so to speak. And then flashing custom firmware. So these things run a little, um, you know, lightweight uh, embedded kernel, uh, Linux kernel. Um, you know, flashing it like you would an uh, access point or something like that. Um, Sorry, the uh, the Avaya, um, the Avaya, and and some Asterix Asterix distros actually are are so lightweight that uh, that you can throw these things on on pretty much pretty much anything. It, it's it's not uh, an incredible amount of space. Uh, maybe you could repurpose some of this stuff. What have you? Just wrapping it up. Trusted can't be trusted, right? Um, you, you'll see it all over the place. Hopefully, you don't see it in your own networks. Uh, former employer, yeah, their their voice over IP VLAN was trusted, uh, and then simply um, removing the plug from your PC port and putting it into your network port uh, allowed you to uh, bypass blue coat proxy um, and uh, you know kind of hang out over there. Trusted can't be trusted. You have to <laughs> don't trust anything, uh, and then kind of. Uh, 
and then kind of um, allow more things, uh, more things out, lock it down first. Secure monitoring, um, secure configuration monitoring for the win. Monitor your network, know what things look like. Uh, know what your traffic looks like, configure your devices securely, nothing should be default, even if it's something as, as simple as uh, a defibrillator uh, or, a, uh, or an IV pump. Um, you know, make sure that it's configured securely, that services are running in the least, uh, least amount of privilege, and, uh, and that you're changing these default passwords. Know your network better than I will. <sighs> you know, you do this for a while and you can very quickly baseline a network. Um, you know, that every, everyone that's involved uh, in the configuration and administration of the information system as a whole uh, should, should know that network uh, way better than, than I can in 10 minutes, uh, you know, pinging and doing some sniffing from a, uh, from, a, from a call manager box. Man, I don't know how these got in there. Um, I cut a little early. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Any questions, I'll take some. I know we have some swag, Stuff. stuffs. Yes, sir. Uh, so, with the recent Black Energy hack that uh, hit out in Ukraine, uh, I was curious, because I had heard that they were doing uh, DOSing on the phone systems. Is that related to the same methodology that you uh, described in your slides? Uh, so, I don't have any first hand knowledge on exactly how they were uh, um, doing a denial service on phones. I would expect that it's a, a very same kind of way. I mean, you can flood these things with packets. Um, I, the, still, I mean, the, the, the check sync packet. The fact that I can just send that to any phone um, and, and have the thing reboot, uh, you know, and loop is is just is just crazy to me. Um, I can speculate and say, ah, you know, that that that's a way that I would do it if I wanted to, you know, lock out phones. Brian, did you check out any of the call reporting uh, features built into Asterisk? So, uh, yeah, like I said, Asterisk is a pain in the uh, butt. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, Asterix is a pain in the butt. Uh, yes, um, I, I, I was researching some, uh, some ways to, to kind of suck that traffic out. Uh, I believe it's called, the name escapes me now. There is actually a tool that's in, uh, that's in Metasploit or, uh, or, or in the Cali distros uh, that that's what it does, um, is it, it grabs uh, uh, Cisco VoIP traffic and some other um, vendor VoIP traffic and converts it into wave audio files. Um, so, is there any way to uh, make, is there any uh, firmware that's like a DDWRT or point to subscribe these ones to secure the war, or is it mostly just for exploitation of these custom firmware? Interesting, it's interesting you say that. So, I was actually uh, reading just before, um, you know, because obviously I've been geeking out on this for a little bit. Uh, uh, there's actually a, an open open wort uh, PBX type distro, which open wort has its own kind of vulnerabilities. There um, is there is there kind of like an open source open wort type distro for that? I mean, uh, free PBX comes in very different flavors. Uh, you have um, the Digium version Asterix now, uh, which has all of your uh, features of free PBX, which is distro uh, distributed under the GNU uh, public license. Uh, however, Digium likes to charge you for other things. They have some very cool endpoint manager plugins and modules, and uh, it's, you know, they're nickeling and diming you. Um, nickel and diming you. There's uh, Free PBX. It's um, the, the main uh, project of Free PBX also puts out a, a, a kind of more lightweight um, Free, BX dis uh, Free PBX distro that's uh, more, I guess, uh, configurable. Is that, does that answer kind of what you're. Uh, okay. So, so coming back to the uh, question about the firmware for the phones, the answer yep. is not yet. Stand by. Yeah, not yet. Stand by. Yeah. That's why I invited you, Jake. That's why I invited you. So when you're hot micing the phones, is there any type of indication for the user at the endpoint or for the administrator going through logs? So on my Polycom, uh, and again, this is just the Polycom 501, you know, free recycled phone here. Uh, you know, um, uh, we stay pretty busy at rendition, so uh, I, I do have, and my wife will uh, will back me up on this, uh, just a pile of, of of phones that I haven't messed with yet. Specifically for the Polycom, uh, the red light turned on. Um, would a user be able to distinguish that from, you know, uh, it's also the same light that alerts you to a voicemail. Uh, you know, a lot of people never check their voicemail, and I'm sure at their desk it's just a red light always, right? Would you be able to tell? I don't know. Uh, as far as logging, logging on the phone itself, I mean, there, 
they're, they're pretty dumb. I mean, it will log to a syslog server. I, uh, in the default configuration, there was no syslog server set up. Um, so uh, on the phone itself, not so much. Uh, on the PBX side, more so. Um, however, uh, like specific tasks, I haven't seen logged uh, granularly, if that makes sense. Um, I know I got another question. I, just one, I got one question. Uh, can anyone tell me what the default Polycom web credentials are uh, for a drone? Oh, I saw you. What's the username? What? Polycom? What's the, what's the creds? Polycom. Polycom, password is? I'm just messing with you. Thank you. Uh, George, you had a question? I mean, you would, you would, yeah, you would hope. Um, you know, some some vendors have it uh, that that check syncs. They'll they'll support check sync with reboot, but only if the config is changed on the provisioning server. Um, so it depends on kind of how you're doing that attack. Um, you know, if 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 I'm if I'm becoming the provisioning server, then obviously my modified times of my configs and stuff would make the phone think that they're brand new. If I'm just trying to get it to reboot um, in that kind of environment, yeah, that would have to be an extra step. I'd have to actually find the provisioning server, do some modifications over there in order to trick the phone to just reboot without uh, check. Not that I not that I saw on the PBX side. No, no, not that I saw. Um, you know, again, uh, for a uh, 35, 45 minute talk, you know, there's, there's, this could be, uh, this could be an incredible workshop. I, I'd love to, to get a bunch of, uh, you know, 20 phones out and we can just go to town. Uh, however, you know, this isn't quite the format for that. Uh, but no, haven't seen any ex explicit logging for that. Uh, I would say uh, full take uh, packet capture or, or even limited packet capture inside your network is a, is a useful thing. Uh, very easily, you can look at a, a SIP packet. Uh, SIP notify packet with a with a check sync message in there, uh, and be able to you know block that or redirect that or or, or do whatever uh, inside your network, and hopefully uh, that would be your best mitigation. There. I mean, how often in in the scenario? Thank you. In the scenario where I was on the Avaya, right? Um, I was the the first time I was the first user to ever log into that thing via SSH, right? How often are you checking logs on the PBX? Um, Probably not so much, right? Uh, and again, if, if your phone starts acting weird and your phone's rebooting, I think most people are going to say, this phone's a piece of crap, let's get a new one. Uh, not uh, an attacker's on here trying to, trying to mess with me. So, anything else? Some prizes? There's no more questions. Um, first, thanks, Brandon. Thanks. Thanks for